Hello and welcome to lesson two here in our electrons unit. Here we're going to talk about light, which is a pretty important thing it turns out. So this is a picture of a light bulb and how that light bulb produces light actually has to do with the behavior of the electrons and the atoms that comprise that light bulb. So let's go in and take a look at how this works. It's really important to understand this at a general sort of scientific literacy purpose, much less your understanding of chemistry. So light, is just one small little piece of a larger phenomenon known as electromagnetic radiation. And so this picture is showing you all of the different types of electromagnetic radiation. It encompasses things like radio waves and microwaves and X-rays and gamma rays. And you can see visible light shown in the almost the middle of this picture. Please note that the wavelengths and the frequencies that are shown here, this is a logarithmic scale, so everything is a power of 10 larger or smaller. And you can see that visible light occupies a range approximately from a little bit below 400 nanometers a little up to a little bit above 700 nanometers in wavelength. We'll talk more about what that means as we go forward. But visible light and all of the other types of electromagnetic radiation are all produced through the same process. So let's go in and look at that process and how it works. Here is how light is produced. I'm going to let you see it, and then we'll talk about it. So watch this animation closely, otherwise you're going to miss it. Cool? I'll show you again. Cool. So what's happening here is that electrons are interacting with energy. The electrons of the atom are absorbing energy. Now they can't just absorb any amount of energy. They can only absorb specific amounts of energy, what is known as quantized amounts of energy. When they do that, and you see that happening here, they enter the excited state. In the excited state, the electrons move further away from the nucleus. They move to a more energetic position around the nucleus of the atom. They cannot stay there for very long at all. So in a fraction of a second, they drop back down and they move back down to their lower energy state, what's called the ground state. And when they do that, they have to release the quantized energy that they had absorbed before. So they release that as a particle of light, what we're going to call a photon. That photon has a particular wavelength and frequency. So it's this transition from the ground state to the excited state, and then from the excited state back to the ground state that produces electromagnetic radiation. Let's look at the example that Niels Bohr looked at when he first thought about this. This is the light that's produced when hydrogen is heated. So when we heat hydrogen up, we get the spectrum that you see here. We only get these four different wavelengths of light. Each of these different wavelengths of light has a different color that we perceive with our eyes. And of course, it has a different amount of energy that is released. We actually see this with every element that we do this to. So every element produces a characteristic spectrum of light. And that's because every element has its own particular electron configuration, something that we'll talk about a whole lot more in depth over the next couple of lessons in this unit. This image is showing you four different elements, and you can see the spectra that each of these elements produces when you subject them to an amount of energy. This is what we would call their emission spectra because it's the energy that they are emitting as their electrons transition from the excited state back to the ground state. This is actually used to identify different elements. You're actually going to do this in your chemistry lab. We're going to do what are called flame tests. And so in flame tests, you're going to take a sample of an element as a dissolved salt, a salt dissolved in water, and we're going to subject it to a high heat. And that sample is going to produce a characteristic color of light. This graphic shows the colors of common ions that can be used in flame tests, though we won't be using radium, for instance, in our own flame tests. And you can see the colors that they produce are all unique and characteristic of those particular atoms because those particular atoms have particular electron configurations and so their electrons will move to particular locations and then produce wavelengths that have particular colors. This is of course also used uh, during fireworks. So the characteristic colors that you see in fireworks are due to the use of different elements in the salts that are packed into the firework. So if you want to make a green firework, for instance, you use a barium salt. Or if you want to make a blue one, you use a copper salt. It's kind of cool when you look at fireworks if you know this because you can see the salts that they're using to produce the different colors that you see when fireworks are ignited and detonated. Both this graphic and the graphic previous come from the Compound Interest website, Compound Chemistry. And that's a really great place to go if you want to see some really cool graphics and learn some really cool things about chemistry. I put a link in the discussion below this video. I would definitely encourage you to go there, check it out because it is pretty neat. So an important thing to remember is that all electromagnetic radiation is produced this way. It's not just visible light. 
the thing that makes visible light visible light is that those are the wavelengths that interact with the proteins in our eyes that sense colors. Outside of the visible wavelengths, we have no way of detecting them using our sensory apparatus. Though we've certainly been able to build machines that can detect the other wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation as well. Thanks for watching our discussion of light and electromagnetic radiation and how it's produced. Make sure that you can do the following things here at the end. Make sure that you can describe how light is produced at the atomic level. The transition of electrons from the ground state to the excited state after absorbing quantized amounts of energy, and then the release of specific wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation as they transition back to the ground state is a really important model for you to have a handle on for your chemistry education and just more generally for your scientific life. Also make sure that you can explain why different atoms produce different spectra. This is going to be useful in chemistry labs and on several different kinds of questions that you might see where you might have to identify the different elements that are present in a mixture due to the spectra that that mixture produces. If you can do both of those things, you're doing great. If you can't, that's okay too. Take a moment and write down any questions that you have. You can always leave any comments or questions in the discussion below the video, and you can always get in touch with me through the information in the info field. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.